They look pathetic. They look like a middle school football team out there. And Deion Sanders stated, oh, yeah, they whooped our butts. No, 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 no. They didn't whoop your butts. It was way worse than that. They whooped your butts. Then they gave you a big wedgie, hung you on the bathroom stall, and took pictures of you and posted it on Instagram and Facebook. And while you were hanging around on the bathroom stall, they were spinning you around, slapping you in the face. That's what happened in this game. <laughs> I've been waiting for this one, and I know you guys have been waiting as well. Ah, oh, man, oh, man, I already know before we get into this. I'm about to make a lot of Colorado fans mad in this video, but it's really funny because the reason they're going to get mad is because I'm telling them the cold hard truth and facts. I'm not intentionally going to try to make you guys mad. I like Deion Sanders. I love me some Deion Sanders. I've been following this guy for two or three years, ever since he started on Jackson State. But nobody likes to hear somebody trash your team, and I get it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to remind you on something. Remember in the offseason when I was making all these Colorado videos? I told you. Number one, I'm going to praise you, and I'm going to give you credit when credit is due. However, on the flip side, what separates my channel is, number one, I'm going to give you credit when it's due. But number two, I'm also going to critique you when you need critiquing. I'm also going to criticize you harshly when you need to be harshly criticized. And guess what? In the first three weeks, I give Colorado all the props in the world because they earned it. But fast forward in time to this Oregon game, they've now earned what I'm about to say in this video as well. I knew eventually this was going to happen. I didn't know what game it happened in, but I knew eventually somewhere down the line, Colorado would get straight up exposed. We're going to talk all about that in today's video. This is the one and only topic we're going to talk about because I think it's that important. But real quick, real quick, we're on the road to 300,000 subscribers. We're super close. And yeah, it's simple. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and helping us get a little bit closer to our goal. But all right, man, blah, blah. I should have crap up. Now that I've heard that, though, let's get into it. Seriously though, we are on the final push for 300k, so consider subscribing if you do enjoy college football content. But getting on track here with this Oregon-Colorado game, man, <laughs> where do y'all want me to start? Well, how about we start with this? Speaking of start, it was over from the start. And what really caught me off guard about this game was how little of a fight Colorado put up. I'm not necessarily shocked they lost by 40-something points. I'm shocked with how pitiful and pathetic they looked out there on the field. And you got to give all the credit in the world to Oregon because they made them look pathetic. It looked like the varsity scrimmaging the middle school. Not the JV, but the middle school. Oregon's players were bigger, faster, stronger, more athletic, overall better. In every aspect of football, Oregon was not even just two times better, but they was five times better in Colorado. I'll put it this way, it was so bad, it was almost unbearable to watch. It was a terrible game to watch. And that's why I quit watching it in the third quarter, because I was like, yeah, I, I can't watch any more of this. It's pathetic. It was a pathetic game of college football. I'll put it this way, I think it was almost worse than when you see Ohio State or Georgia or Alabama play one of them FCS teams. You know what I'm talking about when, like, Alabama plays Chattanooga State, Water Aquarium, Community College, one of those games. You're sitting there thinking, yeah, this team doesn't even deserve to be on the same field as Alabama. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not over-exaggerating it. I feel like that Colorado team played worse than an FCS team. It was bad. I can't emphasize enough how pitiful they looked. It was beyond embarrassing. And I'll tell you this much. We'll go back to Oregon here, give them a ton of credit and props. I think Oregon, they had a fire lit inside of them. They were tired of hearing about this Colorado team, and they were tired of hearing about Coach Prime. And I think Oregon played two times harder in this game than they would in any other game. Oregon walked into this game and was like, F this, we're going to show you how to play college football. Welcome to Pac-12 play. And we got a big Colorado fan base on the channel. I would love to hear your excuses. Bring them on. I would love to hear them. Because guess what? Your head coach even stated in his press conference interview after the game, or his post-game conference, whatever you want to call it after the game, yeah, we got our butts kicked. So when your head coach is stating that, I don't want to see, there's no excuse in the world. Just shut up and take your L. Sometimes in life, it's good to just shut up. Don't say anything at all. Take your L and move on. This is one of those games you just need to shut up, let Matt critique you for 10 to 12 minutes, and move on to next week. But unfortunately, <laughs> we'll get to this in just a second. Next week's going to be worse. You thought this week was bad? Wait till next week, my friend. Anyways, we're not here to talk about next week. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. Let's get back on track with this game. I stated this in my live reaction during the game. You know how we do the live reactions on Saturday. I said that I expected what happened in this Oregon game, that's what I thought was going to happen in the TCU game. I did. I really did. So in this game, I learned two things. Number one, TCU isn't that good of a football team. And number two, 
Colorado is going to struggle mightily against this Pac-12 slate and schedule. Because Oregon's a really good football team. I wouldn't call them great quite your shit, but I'll call them really good. Make no mistakes about it. That is one of the best teams Colorado's going to play all year long. But you play an even better team this Saturday. And here's my thing with the Oregon game. It's not like you barely lost. You didn't even compete. That's what blew my mind. I expected at least Colorado's offense to score 14, 20-something points. I expected them to at least complete some passes, at least block, and they couldn't even do that. And matter of fact, here's a fun fact for you. At halftime, Oregon had 35 points. Okay, you hear me? You understand me? Well, Colorado on the flip side, they had 21 21 total yards of offense at halftime. They look pathetic. They were like a middle school football team out there. And Deion Sanders stated, oh, yeah, they whooped our butts. No, 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 no. They didn't whoop your butts. It was way worse than that. They whooped your butts. Then they gave you a big wedgie, hung you on the bathroom stall, and took pictures of you and posted it on Instagram and Facebook. And while you were hanging around on the bathroom stall, they were spinning you around, slapping you in the face. That's what happened in this game. You want the truth? I'm giving you the truth. It was worse than a butt whooping. This is one of those games as a former athlete myself, I'm telling you straight up, you start questioning your love for the game and if you should even be playing. This is one of those games in the locker room, not a word was said after the game and that whole bus ride home or plane ride home, whatever, not a word was said. You sit there in silence, it's awkward and it's just bad energy. I don't even know what the final score to this game was. I don't even know what the final box score was, but let's pull it up, why not? And while I'm thinking about it, I need to throw this in there. Colorado's lucky that Dan Lanning showed mercy in the second half. This game easily could have been 77 or 84 nothing. You're lucky Dan Lanning has a heart. Okay, final score was 42 to 6. I guess Colorado scored a late one. Like I said, quit watching and late in the third quarter. Colorado did pick it up in the second half. They had 199 total yards of offense. That makes it look way better than what it actually was. And Shadur Sanders wound up having a pretty solid game. I'll talk about him in just a second. 23 for 33, a buck 59 through the air, one touchdown, zero INTs, QBR of 28.2. And when I say he had a solid game, here's what I mean. He didn't make a disastrous mistake and he did all he could do. It's really hard to evaluate how Shadur played because he was a non-factor. He couldn't do anything. The offensive line was like that one-ply toilet paper in the middle school bathroom. As soon as he hiked the ball, bam, they're right on him. Bam, sack. Bam, he's got to throw the ball away. Bam, he's got to throw a one-yard pass to the running back. He was a non-factor. The biggest difference in this game was not only did Oregon have better athletes, the offensive line for Oregon, it looked like they're blocking middle schoolers. And then the front seven for Oregon on defense, they were just bull rushing the quarterback. Colorado couldn't block Oregon to save their lives. And guess what? As much as we want to rave about all the star play, all the running backs, Dylan Edwards, Xavier Weaver, Shadur Sanders, that doesn't even matter if you can't block. The first thing you got to do is block. That is an important part of the game because it's step number one. Then you can pass the ball to the playmakers or hand it off or etc. Well, guess what, guys? If you can't block, game over. You're not going to have a shot to win, and that's what happened. And what's terrifying about this is, number one, you're not going to solve this problem in a week and you play USC on Saturday. And guess what? I got some bad news. Colorado's defense is awful. It's one of the worst defenses in the country. You're not going to stop Kayla Williams. This guy, he's going to be doing tricks on it Saturday night or Saturday morning. They play at 11. To go on top of that, Colorado, if you don't score at bare minimum 40 points against USC, you don't even have a chance in the dark to win. And trust me, USC's defense, it's questionable. They gave up 28 to Arizona State, but I don't see Colorado scoring 28 against USC. I don't. You can't block Oregon, and USC has similar athletes as Oregon. And one of the better parts about USC, believe it or not, is their front seven. Their secondary, eh, a little questionable, but their front seven's pretty dang good. So good luck, Colorado. Good luck against USC. You're going to need that and then some. All in all for this game, to make an extremely long story short, because we could talk about this for 20 minutes, Colorado, you got exposed, and you got exposed bad. Because you know what's going to happen. Every coach in the country, every team you play from here on out, they're going to turn on this Oregon tape. And they're going to try to do the same exact thing that Oregon did. And unfortunately for Colorado, you're not going to be able to stop it. You don't have the athletes right now to even compete with teams like Oregon and USC. And I do want to address this. As far as it goes for Dan Lanning saying, oh yeah, they're fighting for, what do you say, fighting for clicks. We're fighting for wins. The Cinderella story is over. I like it. What's wrong with it? I see all these Colorado fans saying, oh, blah, 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 blah. They're getting mad about it. 
I like it. It's good for the game. It's entertainment. Darren Lanning was using that speech before the game to motivate his team. And guess what? It worked. If the roles were reversed and Deion Sanders said what Dan Lanning said, everybody would be going crazy over it. They'd be loving it. And here's my biggest problem with all this on Twitter, especially these Colorado or Dion fans, whatever you are, they're sitting up here saying, oh, well, we weren't supposed to be good this year anyways, blah, 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 blah. Wait until next year. Wait until two years. Okay, I understand that. Everybody understands that. Everybody knows this Colorado team, or you should know, this Colorado team is two, three years away. I've been saying that from the start. But don't come up with these terrible excuses saying, oh, yeah, well, we weren't supposed to win this game anyways. No, 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 don't do that. Just take the L because you're trying to avoid the fact that Oregon butt whooped you on national TV. And even if you want to have that argument, okay, here's my counter argument. The people saying, wait until next year. Well, why would I believe for a second that you're even going to put up a fight next year? Y'all ain't ready for that conversation, neither am I, because we're here to talk about this year. The switch-up's crazy, because one week they're saying, yeah, bring on Oregon and USC, and then the next week they're saying, oh, well, we weren't supposed to be good until next year anyways. Like, what? Come on, man. You got to keep that same energy. You got to keep that same energy, but I go on and on. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, roll